Hi, my name is Stephen Ramage, and I work for the Group on Earth Observations, also known as GEO. As an intergovernmental partnership, our role is to help all UN member states, i.e. Uh, 120 countries that constitute the GEO members, to understand the value and usefulness of Earth observations for research, policy, decisions and action. We have worked on open data since the beginning of GEO in 2005, and the Open Data Group matches with many of the goals and aspirations of GEO. I would like to briefly introduce some ideas around using Earth observations for policy development and decision making, which then lead to action and, positive, and ideally positive outcomes or impact. My work with the Open Data Group began with the Australian Data Group, which then became Digital Earth Australia. As I see it, the key value of Earth observation is monitoring change over time and the extent of that change. Building this into policy agendas for evidence-based decision-making is why I followed this open data cube path for the last several years. There are numerous types of data cubes and we have been working with the Open Geospatial Consortium or OGC to address different interoperability across these different approaches. With respect to Digital Earth Australia, it has been really great to see the focus on using the Open Data Cube to help government and business. This is extremely important as we build out this global community, that we can continue to support the public and private sectors with others engaged from non-governmental organisations and civil society. What are observations from space was the first algorithm I saw from Digital Earth Australia, and with their large geography and tough climate, being able to provide this capability for all of Australia based on open data from decades of Earth observation was really powerful. Following our early work with Digital Earth Australia, we were able to speak with numerous GEO members about what we had achieved and what the possibilities could be. As such, we work with AfriGeo and others in Africa to kickstart Digital Earth Africa. Today, I'm pleased to be on the governing board of Digital Earth Africa and to contribute to the policy and decision-making elements. The key for all of our work in GEO is country level engagement. Since we work on behalf of and with countries, Digital Earth Africa has um, opened up opportunities to bring in a large number of African countries through AfriGEO participants, including RCMRD, Agrimet, SIS, SANSA, and many others. Also through our collaboration with the World Economic Forum, we've been able to determine the uh, potential scope or the size of the opportunity for using Earth observations in Africa. The team that has consistently been leading and supporting the Open Data Cube work by Australia is the NASA SEO team supported by AMA. My team at GEO leads the policy work looking at the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, the Paris Climate Agreement and the UN 2030 Agenda which many people now know as the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. I asked Brian Kilo how we could present our, uh, of the emerging work on SDGs via the Open Data Cube. And he and colleagues at AMA produced a series of approaches supporting different SDG indicators. This one highlights urban extent, which is 1131, which assesses the ratio of land consumption rate to population growth rate. At the same time, when countries around the world, from Mexico to South Africa, uh, Switzerland to Vietnam, were developing national data cubes for numerous different purposes, Stuart Minchin, who is former Geoscience Australia and who worked closely with me and numerous others, took over the helm SPC, known as the Pacific Community, and started a consultation there with my good friends and colleagues at the Chagrawal and Andrew Jones, working with Pacific Islands, countries and territories. With the experience gained from Australia, Africa, and also emerging work for Digital Earth Americas, the initial consultations and workshops recently started for the Pacific region. In this region, large ocean estates are incredibly important for fishing, trade, and tourism, i.e. local livelihoods. However, like all other regions, water and food security also matter. Again, country engagement is very important, and Digital Earth Pacific has afforded GEO an opportunity to work with more countries in the region including GEO members from Tonga, Australia, and the USA, as well as the Pacific community, CEOS, and others. The team at NASA SEO and AMA has also been able to provide early examples 
using the Open Data Cube to highlight policy action in the Pacific region. In this case, it's for SDG 661 and the change in the extent of water related to ecosystems over time. As the slide shows, Duck Lake is essential for local water supply. So understanding water extent is crucial for policy and action. I mentioned a number of other initiatives and I've recently worked with Amerigeo, CSIRO, UNECLAT, UNGGIM Americas and several GEO members that have started to collaborate on Digital Earth Americas. This collaboration is great to see and a key requirement today for everyone to work together with so many climate and other related challenges. The rate of adoption and the level of interest in the Open Data Cube is really a testament to the work of many people in this growing community. It would be great to see all GEO members engaging in the Open Data Cube. I know that we also now have different countries helping each other, for example, Australia and Mexico, Switzerland and Armenia, and so on. Since I'm based in Geneva, I thought it would be appropriate at this time to share some of the statistics from the Swiss Data Cube. I don't need to go through all of the numbers, but you can see that they are very impressive. In particular, the cost savings associated with open data, and this is obviously something that is applicable around the world for all ODC users. However, on top of cost savings and efficiencies, important environmental policy decisions are also helped through the advent of Swiss Data Cube, as you can see here with this example of snow cover mapping. Equally importantly, the Swiss Data Cube supports a national strategy, which aligns with many of the goals of GEO, for example, from the recent Canberra Declaration in 2019. Finally, I want to highlight a new community activity in the GEO Work Programme, which is called the Open Earth Alliance. It will build on the global Open Data Cube movement, and I believe it will provide some great leadership and important resources for ODC users, practitioners, and beneficiaries. I think that we will continue to see new application areas for the Open Data Cube, whether that's for land monitoring, food security, water resources management, urban expansion, or other areas. My continued focus will be to move us from insights to evidence and then to action, especially as we see the application areas for the Open Data Cube develop and add value around the world. Thank you for this opportunity to present on behalf of the Geo Secretariat, and I look forward to supporting the policy and decision making that is facilitated by the Open Data Cube, including all of your individual and combined efforts. In particular, I'd like to thank Greg Giuliani, Andrew Jones, Jonathan Ross, Brian Kilo, and Sanjay Gowda for sharing content with me. And I wish everyone a great conference. <laughs>